Hello, and welcome to the Tech Talk series. My name is Joy McKnight, and I'm technology editor at The Banker. I'm joined today by Lawrence Wintermeyer, CEO of Innovate Finance, which is a non-profit organization focused on promoting the UK as a global hub for fintech. Lawrence, thanks so much for joining us today. Pleasure. Can you give us uh, sort of a bit of an um, explanation about the origins of Innovate Finance? In Innovate Finance was born out of Number 10's policy office in 2014. Um, as a means of galvanizing startups and institutions who are all focused on fintech, you know, financial services technology. Um, so in, in a, certain, uh, a certain context, it's what we call an ecosystem builder. We were uh, set up as a members association to represent uh, everyone from startups to institutions and help really collaborate, uh, attract capital to London, and make sure that, uh, from a legislative perspective, the government was focused on progressive legislative policies. Okay, and then you joined Innovate Finance in May as CEO. What were some of, some of the sort of priorities that you set for the organization for yourself? Well, the biggest priority for myself was getting out and meeting all of the members. Uh, as at today's date, we've got 170 members and uh, the quality of the products and the services that our members are, are delivering is absolutely outstanding, whether it is a, a startup, a momentum company, a unicorn, or an institution. Um, so having met uh, most of the membership, we set about putting a vision for UK FinTech uh, into the market. And, and that's really all about ensuring that we attract capital uh, to the UK, both venture capital and institutional capital, um, that we're focusing on creating more momentum companies and seeing many more of what we call unicorns today and that we're creating jobs um, in fintech not just for the fintech players but for the fintech ecosystem. Okay, um, and obviously there's other centers like people think about Silicon Valley, obviously Singapore is trying, even Toronto is trying to really become some, a big centre for fintech. How is London really going to stay ahead? Well, London, uh, we always like to think, has the tech of the valley with the fin of New York um, and, and add the lobby of Washington um, all within a sort of 15-minute public commute. So you, you can have uh, breakfast with somebody in Westminster, a policymaker um, or a politician, um, have coffees or lunch all day with CEOs from institutions or from startups um, and ha have dinner with the Lord Mayor and move more IP in a single day on a 15-minute public transport ride uh, than you can in the US. So we think that's pretty important uh, to London. In addition, we've got a very focused government, um, not just in terms of taxation uh, in EIS and the SEIS schemes for entrepreneurs, uh, but a progressive FCA when it comes to uh, regulation and the open bank and API, a progressive Bank of England governor um, and the focus on, on currencies. Um, so we, we, we really think we've got a, a progressive ecosystem here to help accelerate fintechs develop. And what trends are you seeing, maybe predictions for 2016? And do you think this is sort of a bit of a make or break it year for fintech? Well, I think if you follow the money, uh, the money in fintech predominantly has gone into payments, remittance, peer-to-peer -peer lending, and behavioral analytics. The three bigger things that we see on the 2016 horizon are insurance, and insurance seems to really be um, you know, focusing on its role in, in fintech and in, in the technology space. Um, certainly, the challenger banks, a number of whom have been licensed now, are all set to uh, launch at various stages of 2016, so really watch out for that. And I think the advice space, um, and, and that's whether it's the f uh, future of financial advice, called the robo-advice market in the US, or uh, social behavioral applications that just help people understand how to save better, or, or how, to, how to make ends meet even with uh, you, you know, the monies that they have, are fairly popular. I think probably lastly I would say financial inclusion and on that note of, of um, you know, social responsibility has become huge in that uh, I think people recognize that fintech has the opportunity of reaching people who are excluded from the financial, uh, financial uh, system, not just in the UK but around the world. Okay. 
And do you think it's a make or break it for for FinTech in 2016? Well, I, I don't or think, do you think it's just going to? Yeah, continue? I don't think it's a make or break uh, year. I, I think it's it's too early to tell in the evolution of, of, of the FinTech uh, ecosystem. So FinTech has been going for a few years now. It certainly gained a lot of momentum and a lot of capital was raised between 2014, 2016 now that we're going into. Uh, but uh, this is going to continue for a long time. The global uh, pot for payments remittance is in excess of three trillion. Um, you know the the lending markets, the the investment management, asset management markets are huge. You know, right down to the bond market, which is which is uh, you, you know very big. So I, I don't think we'll see any shortage of um, you know innovative. Uh, hipsters trying to disrupt that space, whether they're new to financial services and focusing on on origination, or whether they've come out of the capital markets as experienced financial services professional or focused on a new genera generation of applications that just do things better. Great. Well, thank you so much, Lawrence. Thank you.